you add up all the time that Farage estimates he spends on work outside Parliament for his personal enrichment, it comes to 72 hours a month. That's the equivalent to nine full working days. Nine days, he's not looking after his constituents or doing parliamentary business, and yet he still draws a full MP's wage, which is a nice grift if you can get it. But it can't be right, can it? It can't be the right thing to do. <sighs> if, you did, if you didn't vote reform, do you approve uh, all, of all those second jobs? And what if you don't? I mean, I don't mind what Nigel earns. He's worth it. Yes, yes, yes. Imagine how much more effective, though, he could be pushing his company's policies if he was actually focused on the job he's supposed to be doing in Parliament. I mean, this is probably the, the most extreme example of second job activity by a politician that I can recall. I mean, Boris Johnson, he famously said the two, 250 grand he got paid for writing nonsense for the Telegraph was chicken feed, and yet the Tories feel a train driver who works irregular hours and he gets less than 70 grand is massively overpaid. 250 grand chicken feed for a politician, 70 grand overpaid for a train driver. Time and again, Parliament promises to look at the issue of second jobs and the corrupting, corrosive impact many feel that second, third, fourth jobs have on Parliament. I think I'm right in saying the last promise followed the Owen Paterson scandal, which is four years ago, that lest we forget involved a high-profile Tory, Paterson, illicitly and intensively lobbying on behalf of two firms who paid him at least half a million quid. When caught out, the Standards Committee called Paterson's actions an egregious case of paid advocacy and recommended a 30-day suspension. You remember what the Tory government did? The Tory MPs blocked it and <laughs> called for an overhaul of the MP's standards watchdog instead. It's quite extraordinary, really. Um, they initially had the backing of Number 10, but Downing Street did indeed reverse its decision after a furious backlash, and the former Environment Secretary left Parliament in disgrace. Labour, Tory, Lib Dems, they're all at it. Time to tighten the rules then on second jobs. Uh, it, it, 03456060973 is the number. I'll say again, I mean, how can we be sure that Mr Farage even considers his parliamentary duty representing the people of Clacton to even be his primary focus when he's earning so much for doing a TV talk show. Well, Gina Miller is a businesswoman and political activist, of uh, a leader of the, uh, the True and Fair Party, who had some very strong comments on second jobs yesterday, and I imagine she's feeling very strong-minded about them today. Good morning to you, Gina. <laughs> Good morning, Matthew. Um, I've been strong-minded about this for years. You're likewise. Um, way back to 98. <laughs> likewise. And I have to say, uh, uh, the... I don't. I've lost count of how many times I've covered the issue of second jobs, and yet the the situation appears to be getting worse. Look, I mean, it's really simple as far as I'm concerned. An MP has two jobs anyway. One is looking at all the legislation that goes through Parliament, and the other job is looking after their constituents and and all the issues that that, that people have. Um, you know, we've got 650 um, MPs um, representing almost 67 million people. You know, that's a full-time job. You would think. Um, you would think. So the, the conflicts of interest are there. We have to stop this. We have to stop it. It's quite simple. Bring in a contract of employment for MPs, which can hold them to account, which says no other jobs outside what they're being paid for, elected and paid for, no lobbying, no media shows, nothing. Let, let's just stop it now. And I have to say I'm really disappointed in Starmer because he has said that he will look at the issue of second jobs. But he, for some reason, is not going to include media shows or, you know, in other countries, you can't do that. You, you know, MPs or whoever is elected to a position of representing people can't then have another paid job because there's a conflict of interest. There's also the fact that it gives them an unfair advantage to, if you like, have another platform to promote whatever it is they're promoting at the time. So let's just stop it. What if it was... Um... What if the work was unpaid in media? We, we, we wouldn't have a problem with that. So say when David Lammy has his show here, he, you know, he was doing about five no, hours no, on it Lammy a week. David should not have his yeah. show. No, I'm sorry. It, yeah. it, no, 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 they shouldn't. I don't care what the job is, it, it, what they're doing. They should be concentrating on their legislative duties in Parliament and looking after their constituencies. Look, the constituents. Look, I, I'm, when I was standing for Parliament, I wasn't elected, but I had my office in Epsom and Newell for a year before the election was called. People daily, there are so many issues that people have problems with, be it, you know, landlords who are being aggressive to um, children who need, you know, parents looking for special needs, um, advocacy for their children, to people going to food banks. 
Look, there are about Mr. Farage, for example, as you, you know, he is obviously um, what we're talking about uh, as an example, has 80,000 something like that, 1,000 people in his constituency. People need representing. They need to have to be listened to. They need to be represented. That's an MP's job. Okay, okay. I, I share your passion, Gina. Thank you for that. I'm going to go now to uh, Dr. Andrew Lillico, who I, I was reading a piece he wrote uh, on, online for The Telegraph last year in defence of MPs' second jobs. And I have to say there's, there's some interesting points in it. He joins me now. Morning, Andrew. I mean, one, one of mm-hmm. your assertions is it's not really a job. Well, that's correct. It's, I don't, don't regard uh, being an MP as being a job at all. Uh, and technically, in, in being an MP is an office uh, rather than a job. As the, uh, there's no job descriptions, no um, um, terms before, no period before you have to get fired, um, no, no sick pay, anything of that sort. So it's not really a job in that sense. It's also the case, I would say, that um, nobody really objects if uh, MPs become ministers. And being a minister, nobody thinks that being a minister isn't a job. Uh, being prime minister is definitely a full-time job. And if it were the case that being an MP were a full-time job, then surely you wouldn't allow the prime minister to have a second full-time job as well of being an MP. So I, I think that it's fairly clear that what people mean by banning full-time uh, uh, second jobs or whatever is banning second jobs that I don't approve of. Is the uh, That's the kind of idea. That's jobs also outside why of parliament. Labor's- jobs outside of parliament. The, the, the example you gave of ministers, they're still working within parliament. They're still doing work on behalf of the country as opposed to personally enriching themselves. Well, they're doing work on part, on behalf of the country, uh, absolutely, but they're not doing the same kind of uh, activities as an MP. Um, uh, those ministers are part of the executive, and they're part of what MPs hold to account. They're also so p- they're paid, almost... But they're paid differently, aren't they, because of that role, and they are paid for the work they're doing within Parliament, so they're still within Parliament. I mean, surely it may be the easiest solution to the issues that you rightly flag up about it not being a job, it being an office, is to follow Gina Miller and, and give MPs some kind of contract of employment with holiday pay, with sick pay and such like. Well, I don't agree with that uh, at all either. In my view, uh, M- it's better for MPs to be representing us, having some idea of what it is to um, uh, to be involved in ordinary life, to uh, to get uh, to go to work, to get paid. I also think that when MPs engage with business, or if they're uh, lawyers, then one of the most highly paid MPs is a uh, is an illustrious lawyer, or if they uh, are a, work as economists or an international consultancy, that improves their understanding okay. of the things which they have to do as a as an MP. But Another thing, but sure, thing. Surely, though, as part, part of, I would have thought, a primary duty of care as an MP is to look after your constituents. And as far as we know, Nigel Farage has not yet found the time to hold a constituency surgery, but he has had time for a £34,000 four-day flight to America to support a friend in need and to earn, well, £1.2 million. Pounds. If you if that if what you want from your MP is that they prioritise um, dealing with constituent issues to, that are probably best dealt with by the county council or that passing things on to an ombudsman or, or those kinds of things, then you are free to vote for an MP that does, does those things. I would prefer to have an MP that engages more fully with um, uh, business and law and economics and um, the what goes on in the world. And if that's if that's what I want from my MP, and it is, why should I be forbidden for voting from that sort of MP? If Gina Miller wants to vote for an MP. It's just, it's just quite interesting. All, all the things you gave as an example that you'd like your MP to do, none of those vote for the MP. The people vote for the MP and you neglected to mention looking after the people in that list of things you'd rather they were doing. So if the people vote yes. for the MP but all you want them to do is deal with business, what's the point of having elections? Why don't we ask, I know, Marks and Spencer, Vodafone to nominate an MP and we'll just be done with it. Save the country well, we a fortune. Well, the way in which they um, represent their uh, constituents is... Uh, by engaging, by finding the things that make their constituents' lives better, oh. um, by thinking about um, policy making and uh, legislation and those kinds it's of things. It's difficult to do that, to though. It's difficult to do that when you're fronting a live show four days a week. I did a live show five days a week. It was hard enough to hold a marriage together, to do anything, because it was all consuming. But Farage, he can do that. He can do personalised videos. He can fly to America. He never meets his constituents. Come on, Andrew. It's not a great look, is it? Well, as I say, if if what you if you what you want from an MP is an MP that spends all their time focused on the um, dealing with uh, Parliament. their constituents on a face to face basis, then then you're free to vote for that. But I want something different from my MPs, and I should be able to vote for the kinds of MPs that I want, as well as you being able to vote for the sort Absolutely. of MPs that you want. 